Hello, how are you doing? I'm having a cup of tea and uh, this is Cologne, Germany. And uh, it's going to be about N cloth today. That's in the family of the N system. N comes from nucleus because we have a nucleus um, simulation system uh, at the heart of uh, Maya when it does dynamics these days. It has been around for a couple of years. It has been refined a lot. The algorithm is faster now. And of course, it's uh, um, a very uh, prominent part in Maya 2018 as well. Before we do the end cloth, we need to create a polygon mesh, which will become our cloth. And for example, let me take a sphere and uh, make the resolution higher. It's currently set to 20 by 20. Let's make it 50 by 50 because cloth simulation needs a lot of detail. Um, now I go to the side window. I choose face and I cut off just some of the faces, half of the faces. So I have half a sphere now. Go back to object mode. Here it is. That's going to be our cloth and whatever shape. We want to give it a color and let's give it a Lambert with a cloth material. It can be any other material. It can be just a plain color right? like red for example. But cloth is quite nice really. You see it when you click here. Um, let's make the U and V width smaller put some waves in the cloth and a lot of randomness like this and uh, the black color will be yellow so this is going to be our cloth object we pick it we select it go to end cloth and create end cloth now it's an end cloth we have uh, two more things now in the outliner the sphere is what we had the nucleus is new, that's the dynamic system, which would apply to any object in the scene. If we have other cloths or end particles, they would all uh, be reined and controlled by the nucleus, gravity, air density, etc. I think we covered that in an earlier tutorial about end particles. And this is new as well, the, the end cloth one. If we pick it, we don't see anything, we cannot do anything with it. It's um, just sitting there in the background and waiting for our simulation. Um, when you do a cloth simulation, like in most cases uh, simulations want the playback speed set to play every frame instead of real time. If you uh, ask Maya to do a simulation and at the same time keep pace of, uh, of real time, this is too much asking and uh, uh, simulations usually, even, especially when they're co complex up to a certain degree, they take so much computer power that uh, Smyre has to skip frames in order to and skip um, simulation frames, uh, dynamic frames, in order to uh, keep up to the 24 or 25 frames per second um, pace. So we have a cloth now. And what does it do? It falls to the ground. It does nothing else than that. Um, we want to prevent it to fall to the ground and we can do this in several ways. Um, I like to, well, pick an edge, pick the edges here in the, in the middle and now I go to end cloth and I create, no sorry, I, it's a constraint I want to do. I go to N constraint and I create a transform constraint. A transform constraint means I can move it, but um, the it's a constraint because the object uh, is constrained to this locator. This is the locator now here. Um, now what's happening in the simulation? And that's what we expect cloth how to behave. The animation range can currently set to 120 frames. That's a default. Let's make it longer, may, may, maybe even a thousand. 
and let's have a closer look what the cloth does. It does a wonderful job, doesn't it? If we animate the dynamic constraint, which is here, we can do that, of course, with keyframes, for example. That's what I wanted to show you. If you have a rapid movement up there, of course, the cloth will follow dynamically. When you look at the cloth, what kind of material do you think is it? And uh, here's something which I found very recently, actually. I picked the cloth. In the attribute editor, we see presets. And presets, I think they added some presets in my 2018, I'm not sure. Uh, if you press this button, you get a selection of airbag, beach ball, burlap, <laughs> why burlap? Uh, lava, putty, silk, thick leather, a t-shirt for example. I think we have something like a t-shirt currently. Let's pick silk and if we pick silk we replace the current uh, simulation cloth uh, with uh, silk but we don't have to completely replace it we can blend it by 75 percent for example but we, let's replace it for uh, this purpose for this tutorial um, here there's a brief explanation about what uh, silk is it's smooth it's slippery flexible and non-stretchy it doesn't stretch you see it doesn't stretch that much it just relaxes and uh, here, of course, it's interesting to see how it would collide with uh, a floor. And let's do that, because the silk behaves differently from rubber, for example, uh, when it slips on surfaces. Let's tilt the surface slightly. And under in cloth you create another passive collider let's give this material a color so the simulation shows us how the silk relaxes on that surface and slips over the surface now. Let's raise the, uh, the plane a little bit. And now let's pick the cloth again and try a preset which is totally different, heavy denim for example. Let's re replace it. Burlap is rough, non-stretchy, moderately heavy and very damped. Yes, we can see that. It's very damped. It looks very heavy. If you want to si simulate a very heavy cloth, maybe you should consider taking burlap. And finally a preset lava very stretchy as you can see it doesn't really care that much about the locator up there it wants to float to the ground and stay there. Well, that's all for now. For N particles, you've seen the nuclear solver in the whole scene. You've seen uh, the N constraint, which we can use here for moving and constraining parts of the cloth. 
and this is lava 